Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I breathe thousands of beef shrimp just like this, right? So let's go. Okay, shrimp let's, let's get started, right? I'm gonna give you five tips, right, that will help you massively, massively improve your caridinia beef shrimp keeping, right? And guys, I have them all written down here, and this is an actual excerpt from my new ebook, right, which will be in the link in the first uh, comment in the description below. All right, but what I also want to say, guys, is just to be very clear, is the information that I'm about to share with you today has also been on, on my channel at one point or another. I'm going to give away 10 copies in the description below, right, so I'm going to pick out 10 people completely random. I'll contact you and I'll give you a copy of this as well, right, because, guys, if you're struggling to breed bee shrimp, this is a book that you want to read, right? And that's not just me trying to sell you something. It will literally change your beef shrimp keeping life, right? It is that good, it's that essential, right? So go down and get yourself a copy if you're not lucky enough to win one with our free right, giveaway. guys, let's start off at number five. We're gonna do this in reverse order. Let's start off at number five, and that is gonna be water changes, right? For your beef shrimp tanks. Remember, this is how I breed my beef shrimp tanks, right? For someone else, it may be different, but this is how I do it. And this is what I've found to be the most successful way for me. And then number five would be to do no water changes at all, right? So this tells me that stability is key. It's one of the key points overall when you're keeping bee shrimp. Stability is crucial, right? So why is that good for us? Well, it means we're using less money on things like buffer, RO water, and whatever else. And you have um, extra benefits of stuff like this soil will actually last much, much longer. You're talking years longer if you're not stripping the acid out of the water that helps to buffer the tank. Uh, the, the, the water will just basically last much, much longer. Right, so that is my tip for number five. Okay, tip number four would be um, avoid using powdered foods. Right? And this might be a little bit controversial because I've often used a lot of powdered foods in my tanks and since I've stopped using them guys, my tanks are much, much, much cleaner. It's very noticeable in my tanks that when I look at things like my moss, they're growing much, much, much better than they ever did before. So it kind of is like a knock-on effect where you're, you're not putting so much food into the tank and therefore you're not polluting the tank. And th uh, what I think it is for the moss specifically is the water is just cleaner. It's visibly clearer. The, 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 the water is crystal clear. It's visible clear, the water is crystal clear. And so that is my tip for you for number four, right, is don't feed powdered foods, right? So that is completely separate from neocaridina. I would still suggest you feed powdered foods. For bee shrimp on an active soil, don't feed powdered foods. And number three, right, you're going to actually feed very, very sparingly your normal type of food, right? So you're talking about your um, your Vin blizzards, your glass garden, uh, shrimp dinner type foods, the Ibidama that I use a lot. With that type of food, you're going to use it very, very spar sparingly. And that is for the exact same reasons that you don't feed powdered foods. Right? You're, you're limiting how much stuff goes into the tank so there's less pollution to pollute the tank and basically kill your shrimp. Right? So when you start to do this, it might take a little time for you to actually see any real difference in the tank. For me, it took probably a month, coming up for two months, before I started to see any real difference. And the major differences that you will see, guys, is your baby shrimp will start surviving. You'll start to see a lot more of them. Your, your, your shrimp shrimp will be much, much more active. Right? You'll have less adult deaths. Right? So feed your hard foods, your normal foods, sparingly. And yeah, you'll be good to go, right? So yeah, don't feed too much. All right, this one is seems pretty obvious, but I'm going to mention it anyway, because it's really, really important, and that is this here, use an active soil. Right? Active soils are absolutely critical in maintaining a bee shrimp tank, right? And I think, guys, it's because a lot of it's to do with how uh, bee shrimp, how they evolved originally with um, their eggs being um, made in a low pH environment. Eggs are, are prone to a thing called egg calcification. I go over that in my ebook if you want to have a little quick squiggle over that. Um, so if you have, for example, if you buy bee shrimp and then you put them into a tank and you don't have an active soil, there's no lower pH for the shrimp rate. And then even if they do breed, if they get buried and you can see the young, there is often, quite often what happens is the survival rate will be very, very low of the egg and the baby shrimp, right? So 
Yeah, make sure you get an active soil. It does a lot for the tank. It does things like cleaning. It lowers the pH of the water. It actually acts as like a giant stabilizer in the tank. It is really, really crucial, guys. Right. So, if you're going to do a beer shrimp tank, remember use an active soil. And at number one, right, is uh, pH. Right, you must get your pH down to roughly about 5.5 pH for beer shrimp. Somewhere in the ballpark, guys, of 5.5 to 5.8, I find is the really good optimal zone. And you can do that with a lot of um, soils. I have a lot of varied soils in here. And be because you're not doing so many water changes, your soil is actually able to get a lower pH than it would be if you're constantly changing it the water, right? Because you're, you're not stripping the water of its acids, this main buffer in, in a tank. Right? Because if you're not familiar, right, this is... Um, active soils, the, the, the acid that's in the acid soil, in the active buffer, in the active soil, <laughs> is the main buffer for the tank. Right? It's not the same as other tanks where you have um, a GH and a carbonate hardness. Um, in a base shrimp tank, it's just GH, where right? there's no carbonate hardness at all. Right? So you don't have that same buffering capacity. So it's essential that you keep the acid in the tank because that is the buffer. Acid is your buffer in an active carbon. Active substrate, oh my god, active substrate soil, right? So, guys, remember, keep your pH low and your shrimp will be happy. All right, shrimp plates, we're going to go over one last thing because it is all to do with each other. I basically touched on it a little bit there, and it is water quality. Your water quality is the key overall, right? So that is my sixth tip. I'll, I'll name it as the five on the video, but there's going to be an extra bonus one on, on the, for the sixth tip, and that is... Make sure your tanks are incredibly clean. From the start, right, watch your feeding. Right, don't feed powdered foods. And uh, let your tank mature and cycle the best it can. And you'll see a massive difference in the water quality. You'll see a big difference in your bee shrimp reproduction. You just see, uh, in general, you. The, the thing I noticed, guys, when I started to do it this way was the, the thing that changed was how active the shrimp were. They, they went from being... A little bit lethargic in some tanks to being absolutely crazy like a hoarding zombie horde. Hoarding zombie horde, you, you get what I mean, right? It's basically like zombies outside the door, the door opens, they all come rushing in, they're trying to grab you. And that's what it's like if you do this properly. Your shrimp feeding will be the same. And remember guys, leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, you'll stand the chance of winning one of my free ebooks. If you don't want to wait, of course you can just buy it from one of the links below. And uh, yeah, guys, if you want to watch more, then please do go over here and uh, click this next button here. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. Happy shrimp keeping.